Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to synchronize variables over the network. I've actually already recorded this video once, but I wasn't really happy with the outcome, so hopefully this one is better. Uh, now, let's just get right into it. So first of all, let's create a new script, and what I'm going to show you how to synchronize is the player's health. So I'm going to call the script player health, and I'm going to attach this to our player component, or player object. And let's open up the script. So in here, first of all, we're going to be using fishnet.object and we're going to be using fishnet.object.synchronize. We're also going to be making the script into a network behavior as per usual. And as per the usual setup, we're also going to make sure that we disable the script from everybody who is not the owner of it. So we're going to do a public, we'll write void on start plan. And then in here, we're going to do if owner. We're actually going to do nothing, so we might as well just inverse this. So if base is not owner, we're going to take the get component player health. We could also do this, but I prefer doing it this way. But enabled equals to false. So now we're disabling the script as I've shown in other trials as well. I'm not really going to get into that. Now let's just start with the actual synchronization. So let's make a public integer as we normally would for our player health. And I'm just going to set it to 10. And this is how you obviously make a local variable. But if you want this to be synchronized, you can actually write sync var in the front because we're using fishnet.object.synchronizing. Now, what this means is if you make a local change right now in this script, it will actually be synchronized to the server, but the server is currently not pushing it to the other players. So that's what we're going to be doing now. So let's first of all, in an update loop, just make sure that we can actually change it. So I'm going to do input. Dot, oh, whoops. I'm going to do an if input dot get key down. And then I'm just going to do a key code. Let's do R. And then in here, we want to run a function where we actually update the health and tell the server to update this health for us, because then that's going to get pushed to all the clients. So let's make a server RPC, which is shown in the previous video, how we update over the server. So I'm going to do a public void, and this is going to be, let's call it update health. And in here, we first of all want to reference to this script to make sure that everybody knows that we're updating it to, that this is the script we're going to be changing. So I'm going to do a player health and call it script. And we also just want to send in the amount to change. And then in here, we can do script.health plus equals to amount to change, like so. And then in the update function here, when we press the button R, we can just call the update health function, like so. And we can send in this, which is the script. And we can send in the amount of change. Let's say we want to subtract one health. And this is basically it. So this is automatically synced to the server and this is telling the server to change it for everybody. So let's go and test it out by building the project. So I've now built the project and I've set it up so that the built version is right now a client and the Unity version is the server and the client. Now, it's important to mention that I haven't made any way for us to actually display the health change. So that's why I'm using it in the inspector so that we can actually keep an eye out for the change. So this right now, the second one here, as you can see, is our joint player over here that has joined as a client. And if we look in the inspector, you can see his health right here. So if we go onto him and we press the button R, let's do three times, for example, you can see his health is now seven. And if we go into the Unity version, we can just select him. You can see he is 10 health. And if we press R, you can see that's also coming down. But what's even more interesting is what happens when we inverse this. So I've now inversed it. So in this case, the second player here is actually the inspector view. So if we go here, we press R, you can see that's getting updated perfectly fine. And if we just keep a close eye on the server version as well, which is this version right here, and I'm gonna press R, let's do five times. You can see his health is now also five, which means it's sending perfectly over the server and everyone is seeing the changes, both the server and the clients are seeing these changes. So I really hope that this was useful to you. I know this was really short, um, but this was just to give you a general idea of how you would work, work with synchronization. Now, I will leave a link in the description to the fishnet documentation on synchronization because there's so much more you can do with this. This is only the surface and the very, very basics of actually synchronizing. There's a lot of other ways to do synchronization as well, but this to me is the easiest to grasp how it works. Now, you can synchronize variables, obviously, as we've just done, but you can also synchronize lists, dictionaries, and you can even make your own custom synchronization types. So, for example, if you make a custom class and you want to keep this always synchronized, you can also do this. You just need to see how the setup works which you can do in the fishnet documentation so i really hope this was useful to you if you like it i like it as much as appreciated a subscription is always much loved 
and have a wonderful day.